everyone, Pastor Rod here doing a series on Proverbs Wisdom to Win. Today, number six, the connection between God-given wis- God given vision and winning. God-given vision for winning. I believe with all my heart that God is a creative God. He's a, a speaking God, a communicating God. I believe every day we can hear his voice. Uh, the Bible calls it a small whisper. Um, it's not, it's not a voice that, you know, rod, plumber, blah, blah, blah. it's an internal functioning of the Holy Spirit within us and reading God's word, God given vision. And I'm going to read, uh, Proverbs 29, 18. For many of you, it's your favorite proverb. It just says in the King James, where there is no vision, the people cast off restraint, but they who guard or watch over the, the law are happy. Um, the first part, without a vision, the people perish. And I'm going to dig into it a little bit because I want to know what it means. What does it mean to have this vision? And I want to read some other translations straight up. It says uh, in the Holman version, without revelation, a concept, a, a ding moment, a, a heart moment, a boom, boom, something, something going off in our heart and mind. Without that, people run wild. But the one who listens to instruction will be happy. And at the end of this verse, we hear the word will be happy. And the Hebrew is, oh, how happy are they? The happy ones. These are the happy ones. And as a pastor, I want to I want to hear people say, I'm a happy one. I'm a happy one. I've got vision. I've got revelation. I'm, uh, I'm not throwing away God's goodness. I'm holding. I'm so happy. And this is the, the beauty of, of Proverbs from a heart full of God is that we, we see God's instructions not as limiters, but actually as restraining us for a great future dream, etc. This word dream or vision or revelation is a very special Hebrew word, kazon. It, it first appears with Abraham in Genesis 15, and, and it says that God appeared to Abram in a vision, in a kazon, in this boom moment, this, this moment of, of, of eruption of the heart, a, a revelation. And, and God spoke to him and said, I'm your great reward. I'm with you. I'm your shield, Abram. I'm going to be protecting you and I'm going to be rewarding you. And then God took Abram outside under the stars at night and said, can you count the stars? That's how many children you're going to have. That's how many descendants you're going to have. And it says, Abram believed the Lord and God thought, "Mm, this is righteous. This is right. Abraham's right. Abraham's righteous. And this is the concept of salvation, believing and believing and knowing that God has changed us, etc. I became a Christian at 19. I was a fireman, came into the church. I didn't know what to think about church at first. It was new and strange. But one of the things I really did see was great marriages. I saw that people had great relationships and had great marriages. And I saw and I got a revelation. That's what I want. You see, in my family, my dad left the home when I was eight. My parents divorced when I was nine. And I I know a lot of people these days have that experience. And I also know it's very painful and actually wounds people to some degree. I felt I was wounded as a, I wasn't a Christian. And I grew up in a a loving, you know, my, my family loved me and my dad loved me in his own way, but I just didn't have a relationship with him. He just wasn't around me. He didn't support my sports and uh, achievements. And um, it was only later I realized, you know, he had his own problems. But as a as a teenager, I began to get very upset and, and despondent and depressed. And late, later teens, I got into some bad things. I became even, even a little bit suicidal. Used to think about it a little bit every day. I don't think I would have ever committed suicide. I need to be clear. But I did think about it somewhat every day. And when I became a believer at 19, God delivered me of that depression and and suicidal thinking, boom, and filled me with his Holy Spirit love and power. And as I'm saying, as I went to church, I saw a new picture of marriage. I got a revelation of God-given marriage. Without a vision, the people perish or people throw off things but with God's guidance they're happy what a great 
concept. And I want to encourage you to seek God's revelation for marriage, for parenting, for jobs, for study, for ambition, for achieving, for winning. Winning. Proverbs means little sayings that help you rule and reign in life. Little sayings like, without a vision, people perish, but with a vision, people hold on to discipline. Now, I've got my little illustration here. Um, It's a silly illustration, I know, but it's the concept of tying wisdom into my life. And so as a young Christian, I saw marriage and I said, that's what I want. I want God's ways. And I tied on a vision of marriage and purity, in sexual purity. I tied on and it became so strong, such a conviction that I became happy. Even though I was single for many years after becoming a believer, I got uh, became a believer at 19. I think I married at 25. And um, that means six years. I waited. And I tell you, I was waiting with a sense of vision. You see, to untie it, so, oh, well, without a vision, well, we don't, we don't need to wait till we're married. We don't need to do it God's way. And I'll take off my restraint. That, that is not going to lead to someone saying, wow, I'm so happy. It's when we tie it on. Now, I can't tie this on you. If I say, here you go, I'm going to tie it on you. I'm a pastor and you've got to do it. It's not going to work. That's called legalism. But if I say to you, hey, if you take the restraints of great marriage and purity, if you take those restraints, you're going to be happy. Don't listen to the world. Don't listen to what the, the, the Proverbs uses the word fool. Don't, don't listen to the fools or the know-it-alls is probably a better word or those without a compass. Don't listen to the world's wisdom. Don't listen to celebrities on Instagram. Listen to what God says. He wants you to have great relationships. He wants you to have a husband or wife that loves you and is faithful to you. And I'm going to, to get that, I'm going to allow God into my heart. Give me a vision. Give me a vision. I want to tie it into my life and I want to see it because vision is all about seeing something. I want to see it. And, and, and that becomes a strong restraining force in my life. I want to dig in a little bit further before we finish today about without a vision. See, this word vision is not just seeing something in a magazine. It's it's about truly getting a revelation. This is a great thing. I put it in my life. I want great marriage. I want great kids. I I want a great family. This is a vision that's going to hold me. It's going to hold me in place. I'm not going to throw off. Without a vision, without a vision, people throw off. All sorts of things. They throw off authority. They throw off dreams. It's a bit like Esau. It says the Bible, he says, says he hated his destiny. He hated his birthright. Can you imagine someone hating a God-given vision? I hate what God has for me. No, no, no. It says in Proverbs 29, 18, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, not for evil, but for good and for a future. That's the plans. That's what I want to tie in. And to tie it in means I've got to really keep feeding the vision through God's word, through fellowship, through hanging out with good people. Without a vision, people throw it off. With a vision, people hang on and as a result, over time, build great lives, build build wealth, build success, wisdom to win. This this proverb goes on to say this this good man guards, guards, the, the guards the, the instructions from God and Even though it's hard, happy is he, happy is she, happy are they, happy, happy. I believe this is true happiness when we hold God's vision, God's God's dream. What's God got for you? I believe it. God's given vision is for winning. God's given restraints are for great lives. I believe it. I'm going to pray. Thank you, Lord. I pray that we would hold the restraints of marriage and relationships of good friendships, good words. We hold the restraints because happy are they, happy are they. Lord, I want to thank you, Holy Spirit. You're going to help us. You're going to help all those watching and listening today to say, I want a great life. I want God's vision, God's ways in Jesus' name. Okay, come on, let's keep reading God's word and holding on to dreams and visions. God bless you.